Good morning. This is the numerical associated with the CD series feedback uh, topology, which we'll consider. So in the last lecture, we considered uh, about the, uh, what you call series series feedback topology. Now we are talking about the numerical associated with it. So we are assuming here we consider IC1, IC2, and IC3 as different values, and then what is given to us is HFK and we are having R0 equal to infinity initially. And we need to find again A, uh, that is basically G, the capital G uh, in some literature, the feedback factor beta, and the uh, closed loop gain AF, which we can call it GF also, I0 by Vs, uh, which is I0 by Vs, the voltage gain V0 by Vs, the input resistance, R in equal to RIF and the output resistance ROF between the nodes Y and Y dash. And now, if R0 is equal to uh, uh, 25 kilo ohms of Q3 in place of infinity, then we need to estimate the approximate value of the output resistance, uh, which is nothing but ROF for this particular triple feedback set, you know, three transistors. We are calling it as feedback triple because of the reason that we are using the three transistors. So in the next circuit, what we are trying to do is we are just taking out in the analysis, we are just separating this out. That means this component is taken separately out on this side, the resistor and the resistor RF and RE2. And similarly on this side also RE2 and then RF and RE1. So we are separating out this on the input side as well as on the output side, you know, with uh, the proper loading and then trying to write the equivalent circuit. So thus, we will get the equivalent circuit which is like this with RE1, RF and RE2, RE2, RF and RE1. So now, these two transistors, if you see, they have the emitter, you know, resistance in the, on the emitter side, connected to the emitter we have resistor network connected to the emitter we have the resistor network here to this emitter to the emitter of q2 we don't have any resistor connected together so whenever such is the case then we replace this transistor by means of the what is known as the t model this is known as the t model and whenever emitter is not connected to a resistor will generally replaced by the what is known as the pi model hybrid pi model this is the t model and this is the pi model so we are replacing q1 and q3 by the t model and q2 by the pi model so in that case what is it we are going to get as the value of amplification for the q1 that is what is VC1 by VI, VC1 by VI. So this we put over here. So once we put this over here, then naturally RE will come in series with this total combination. RE will come in series with this total combination. And here at the collector side, we are going to get alpha IE. And in the analysis, RC1 is going to go to the ground. RC1 is going to the and equally, because we are connecting for R2, this particular circuit where emitter is grounded, RC1, it goes to ground, R pi will come, R pi of Q2 will come in parallel with this RC1 because this RC1, uh, you know, that thing goes to the ground. And from here, we'll have R pi coming to the ground. So both are going to come in parallel. But we also have, a current source which is there here of q1 the dependent current source is alpha ie where ie is the current which is flowing through the combination of re and this total thing so therefore we will have now vc1 vc1 is the voltage which is got here which that will be equal to the you know uh, <coughs> uh, what you call the value VC1, we, we can try to write in terms of the VI. So VI 
is nothing but the voltage over here. The voltage over here. So voltage over here just means it is the voltage here. So that is IE. It is nothing but IE. The VI value is nothing but IE multiplied by RE1. This RE, RE1 because we are having Q1. RE1 plus this you know combination and this combination is re1 in parallel with rf plus re2 so this total thing plus re1 because re1 is the emitter resistance of q1 for the sequence circuit that multiplied by ie is what we have here so and at the uh, what you call output side that is vc1 will be nothing but alpha ie with a minus sign because i should control the current like this that this goes to the ground and i see uh, current flowing into the rc1 and with the parallel combination r5 will be minus alpha ie Man, minus alpha ie into rc1 in parallel with r5 2 is what we will have here so ie and ie or rather ie uh, 1 and ie 1 are going to cancel and we are left with minus alpha RC1 in parallel with R2 divided by RE1 plus RE1 in parallel with RF plus RE2. If you substitute all these values which are given to us, we'll, we are going to get this. Next, we go for VC2 divided by VC1. VC2 divided by VC1, Q2 we will replace by this equivalent circuit so that we can try to find the amplification for this, which is VC. 2 divided by VC1, rather VC2 divided by VB2. VB2 is nothing but VC1 itself. So therefore, we are trying to write that over here like this. So if we replace this by this equivalent circuit over here, then we have the, you know, we can try to write the equation for the whole thing over there. So now the, the what you call RC2 is going to be drawn. RC2 is going to be drawn, and RC2, uh, what you call, has to be, uh, you know, uh, on this side. On this side, you have the what you call uh, the R5 of, uh, so to say, the you know total value of this. Okay, R5. Uh, on this uh, for uh, R, R5 will be this. This has to be replaced by again this one. So RC2 will go to the ground and not only RC2 will have here the what you call uh, you know parallel resistance here and that will be you know this the the uh, what you call we need to consider the resistance here and that resistance will be the uh, total resistance of this network which will correspond to re3 re3 small re3 plus the total combination over here that is written like this now that is multiplied by ie but here we have ib so ie translated onto the ib side will give us hfv plus one multiplied by that particular resistance whatever resistance is there here totally that translated on this side this is ie multiplied by you know the voltage here uses ie multiplied by this total resistance over here which is small re1 with the parallel combination now the resistance here will be ib multiplied by the resistance which is equal to ie multiplied by uh, uh, what you call ie multiplied by the the resistance here, the resistance here will be the IB multiplied by the what you call resistance will be equal to the IE multiplied by the resistance over here. So therefore, we need to multiply by HFV plus one this whole thing, and RC two is going to come in parallel. So therefore, that will come in parallel, and we are having GM VBE and input side you have we are taking. VBE only, no emitter resistance. So VBE is the input side. 
So naturally, GM multiplied by the whole combination will give you the VC2 divided by VC1. The minus term is there because of the inversion, because the current flowing here is like this, but when we talk about flowing into RC2, then the current will be flowing like this, reverse of that. So therefore, this will be minus GMT. So thus we'll get the equation like this, and hence if we multiply this, if you substitute these values, we are going to get this value. Now, at the end, we have I naught dash, I naught dash divided by VC2. At the end, we have I naught divided by VC2. So VC2 is this, or indirectly it is VB, okay? VC2 or VB connected to the ground. We can't say VBE, we can say VB3, VB3 which is connected to it. So I see uh, I naught is IE3 by VB3. IE3 by VB3. So as I said, this has to be replaced by this equivalent circuit now. So we have IE3 here, you know, and the IB, uh, you know, VB3 value, which is the VB3 value is this is going to come in series with this, with the current flowing here as the value of IE3. The current flowing there is the IE3. And IE3 in the numerator, denominator will be IE3 multiplied by RE3 with the parallel combination of this. So IE3, IE3 cancels. We are left with just RE3 plus RE2 in parallel with RF plus RE1. Substituting all this, will get 10.6. So A or G will be equal to I naught by VI. This I naught by VI, that is the value of I naught dash by VI will be equal to, you know, VC1 by VI multiplied by VC2 by VC1 multiplied by I naught dash by VI so that you can, you know, these two, uh, what you call cancel. Uh, so to say VC1 and VC1 cancel and <coughs> so this should have been I naught dash by VC2 there's a mistake here right this is VC2 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 cancels and we are left with I naught dash by VA dash so these three things we if you multiply we will get the value of I naught dash by VI that is 20.7 now how do we find the beta value. So beta value is nothing but VF dash by I naught dash. So what we are doing is we need to con con connect a constant current source, which is I naught dash, which you are considered in the last class. You know, to find beta, we need to connect here the current source. So hence, we are just repeating that and we are just trying to connect that and for trying to find VF. So we, what is VF? VF is nothing but the current which is flowing here, this the voltage VF is at this point, that is current flowing into this, multiplied by RE1. So what is the current flowing here? The current flowing here is the current flowing in this network, because there cannot be any current flowing here, all the current is flowing here. So the current flowing here is nothing but, in terms of I naught dash, we can try to find out as I naught dash, multiplied by the resistance in the other arm, that is RE2, divided by the sum of the resistance in both the arms. One arm is RF and RE1, the other arm is RE2. The current flowing through this is the current which is flowing like this. And therefore, that current is equal to this current multiplied by RE2, divided by RE2 plus RE1 plus RF. All that is being mentioned over here. And if you substitute that, we'll get 11.9. AF is equal to I naught by VS. Again, we can try to substitute VS is equal to VI plus VF. VF is equal to beta, uh, you know, uh, I naught and VI is equal to uh, I naught by, uh, VI is equal to I naught by uh, A. And taking out common, we are going to get A by one plus A beta, which is the standard formula, hence, we will not elaborate on this, but rather substitute the values of A to, to as 20.7 divided by 1 plus 20.7 into 11.9, and we will get this value. Similarly, voltage gain is nothing but output voltage by the uh, you know source voltage, V0 by Vs. 
output voltage is minus IC RC3 by Vs and IC is nothing but the I0 itself, I0 by Vs. So this is minus uh, AF into RC3. AF we have already found as 83.7. We are multiplying it by RC3. Then we will get the value of the voltage gain, which is 50.2 volt per volt. Input resistance of the amplifier circuit will be Ri is equal to the, the value which is uh, this. This we can easily consider something like this. We go back to the, what we call circuit over here. And the input impedance is the input impedance of this. And that will be naturally the one which is translated on this side. The resistance at the emitter is, is nothing but Re plus the combination of this. So IE multiplied by this is the voltage, which is same voltage that is equal to the what you call Ri into IB. So I, you know, Ri, Ri will be equal to R in R R I will be equal to uh, naturally the what you call IE multiplied by the total resistance Re plus this combination divided by IB. IE by IB will be equal to HFE plus one. Hence, we will get HFE plus one here. HFE uh, HFE plus one here, and that multiplied by RE1 plus the parallel combination of the network which is given to us. So thus we will get 13.65 kilo ohms. So input resistance of the feedback amplifier with feedback is this is without feedback. So with feedback will be RE multiplied by 1 plus A beta. So 1 plus A beta is the value which we are already you know having here in the denominator and that if you multiply with this we'll, we are going to get 3.34 Megaohms. The output resistance R0 of the amplifier circuit is the resistance looking between Y and Y dash in the earlier one. So this is Y and Y dash. This is the resistance looking at that place. So this R0 is equal to Re in parallel with Rf plus Re1 plus Re3. So this is again this whole thing is associated with the you know uh, what you call this circuit so this circuit so this has to be replaced by this as I said and if you replace this you know replace this by uh, this by this over here then what we are going to get here are e, uh, in series with the whole uh, network combination over here right and and that is the one which we are having uh, on this side, this total thing. And we have another combination which is RC2 divided by HFE plus one. And this can be considered something like this. So we have here the RC3. The same RC3 is, three is being mentioned, uh, sorry. The, this is not RC3, it is rather RC2. And this RC2 is again, if you consider, you know, uh, you know RC2 is over here. So this RC2 is multiplied by the IC2 are nothing but IB. So if I translate it on the other side, if I translate it, so the, 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 this value will be the value here. And if you translate it onto the IE side, then naturally I should divide this resistance RC2 by HFE plus one. And that is why we are having, because the relationship between IE and IB will be IE by IB is equal to HFE1. So therefore, the IB into RC2, if it is translated on this side, it will become IE into RC2 uh, divided by uh, HFE plus one. That is why we are having this H RC2 divided by HFE plus one. So once we substitute that, we are going to get 143.9 ohms. The output resistance of the feedback amplifier now will be ROF is equal to RO multiplied by one plus A beta because the series uh, of the output, which is nothing but the, uh, what you call, uh, current sampling will give us the multiplication by one plus A beta and we will get the value this multiplied by one plus A beta and 
35.6 kilohms is the resistance. Now, if we don't consider R0 equal to infinity, if we consider some value of R0 uh, 3, uh, which is given as 25, then what is the output resistance which we have at the output? So now we are not considering R0 as G, uh, infinity, uh, but some value. So therefore, the equivalent circuit to be considered in place of Q3 is this now. We are not taking the pi model now. Uh, for the simplification of output resistance, we see that the, uh, sorry, uh, we are not taking the T model, we are rather taking the pi model for the uh, Q3 now with R0 in uh, parallel with the GM V pi. So the, the, the derivation for this is a little involved, but what one can consider is again, if we consider this, you know, the value of, uh, uh, you know, the, the R0 over here is there, so R0 or R0 3 is there here, this is the output resistance, R0 3 is there, and then we need to consider what is the, uh, what you call, uh, current flowing through that, current flowing through this. So after this E, what you have is the ROF, what you have is the ROF, and not only ROF, now this is going to the ground. So if this is going to the ground, R pi is going to come in parallel with ROF. So ROF and R pi are going to come in parallel. That is why we have this. But what is the current flowing through that? And the current flowing through that, the R pi and the what you call ROF is the current which is associated with the what you call IB, IB, uh, only the IB. So IB is flowing through the combination of R pi in parallel with ROF and we have here IC. So IC by IB will correspond to 1 plus GM3 RO3. This is the derivation which uh, you know is a little involved and we are not doing that. That is the assumption we will make. So RO3, uh, RO3 uh, in uh, what you call in series with ROF in parallel with R pi 3 multiplied by the 1 plus GM3 RO3 is the resistance which we have. And if you, uh, you know, just trying to simplify this, uh, but you can substitute here itself and we will get the value 2.5 micro. So this finishes the numerical. Uh, with this, we'll stop the today's uh, lecture.